you're going to see a move to alternative payment systems and alternative currencies, some mediated by phone companies, some mediated by other brokers, essentially mediated by anyone who is in the business of turning money into information. Information is much more mobile than money. It's much more easy to transfer. It's also much harder to track. So this is a really interesting problem for people who are trying to maintain and watch financial system. Because as soon as you have the ability to turn a stack of cash into information and back out again with very little loss, you have this great possibility of starting up an alternative, alternative financial system. So imagine for the moment that you're a young businessman in Kampala, Uganda. You moved away from a village about 100 kilometers away. You moved to the big city. You've got a good job. You make enough money every month that you can save a little bit, and you want to send it back to mom in the village. The way you used to do this doesn't work very well. You look for a taxi driver that's driving home to mom. You hand the money to the taxi driver, and you ask it to, to bring it to mom. And about 95% of the time it works, and about 5% of the time it doesn't. So when mobile phones started becoming pervasive in Uganda, people found a different way to do this. What you would do instead of sending 50 bucks to mom is you would go out and buy $50 worth of phone cards. You would call the one person in mom's village who had a phone. You would read the numbers on those phone cards off to her. And she would now have $50 of credit. She would then bring the phone over to your mother hand her $49, take her transaction fee, and your mother would confirm the transaction. And this has a much higher chance of success. This was called Sente. This emerged as a cash alternative in what was otherwise a completely cash-based society. There aren't a lot of checks or check clearing bureaus. There's almost no credit cards within the country. There are no mailing addresses within many sub-Saharan African nations. So finding alternative currencies, particularly alternative currencies based around telecommunications, turns out to be incredibly transformative. Once you have an infrastructure, whether it's something like PayPal, whether it's something like the ability to move money through the phone system, you actually open up opportunities for innovation. Uh, just an example of this, um, friends of mine um, have groups on LiveJournal where they will routinely get together and raise money to help people pay for big expenses in their lives. Uh, I've seen people raise money for a mutual friend for that person to buy a car. And this is the sort of thing where it sounds crazy to buy somebody a car, but if everyone's chipping in 20 bucks and you have a large enough circle of friends, it's actually very realistic. But the transaction costs of that are very, very high. Once you can build the whole thing around PayPal and suddenly make it so that someone can go to a single place and donate and bring it all together, it becomes much more realistic. So I'm interested to see if we see phone companies, other sort of brokers, constructing what's essentially a parallel currency. And if this parallel currency has more flexibility and more space for innovation around it than existing currencies, what sort of innovations will you see? Uh, you'll probably see peer-to-peer -peer lending you'll probably see some really interesting novel investments that are better than the 0.25% that I get from putting $5,000 into a checking account.